I've been really thinking about this as a little bit of like the the nano diamond tip of the spear, meaning. Wow. Wow. That's, yeah, the, wow, that's cool. <laughs> the, 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 the problem of governance and the problem of institutions is a fundamental problem in this moment in time. Yes. Uh, we don't really understand, we don't have the kind of governance capacity that we need to respond to the meta crisis and the meaning crisis. Yes. Our institutions are more or less adding fuel to the fire, even if they're trying really hard to do a good job. Yes. We need yes. to actually inventio new institutions and we need to inventio a new approach to governance, broadly speaking, across the entire field of human endeavor. Yes. As it turns out, dialogic commons is the center of the center. And if you don't have a dialogic commons, you can't figure anything out. That's right. If you do have a dialogic commons, it's the ground around which you can begin the process of addressing other things. And yes. As it turns out, uh, Twitter turns out to be an exemplary opportunity, both in terms of safe to fail, extremely meaningful, and awesome to win. So yes. if you can solve the problem of governance in the context of Twitter as a public commons, you have simultaneously addressed meaningful questions and the problems of governance in the 21st century in general. Yep. You've done so in the context of something that's already at critical mass in terms of both number of people, diversity of locations and perspectives. It's a truly global platform. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the influence that it has over the public conversation, it yep. will serve as the role as the dialogic commons and therefore becomes the ground from which we can do the rest of the work we need to do, right? So it's a, and as it turns out, our, our friend Elon has shaken things up enough that the possibility of that shift is quite relevant, like we could pull it off. And mm -hmm. if we pull it off using Web3 properly, we simultaneously demonstrate what Web3 was here for in the first place, give it its proper raison d'etre, and meaningfully shift big chunks of the rest of governance, which include things like money and uh, agreements, into a completely new milieu and infrastructure that can handle the strength that we need for for the problems of the 21st century. So it's like, you know, 19 synergy values simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. Meta is the key. Uh, we really need to be able to say, okay, look, we have a lot of received frameworks on how we do governance. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, those received frameworks are derivative, meaning they were largely developed in the generator function of the 17 and 1800s. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were developed in that period of time. And we've been kind of playing out the consequences of that cauldron of innovation for you know, the past 250 years or so uh, across the world. Right? Mostly that structure, the constitutional liberal democracy with you know, multicameral division of powers, all that stuff, uh, waged successful war on governance in general across the globe and uh, in various mutations displaced much of what was already there and it's sort of established and has played out what can happen. And what I would propose, and I'm pretty confident about this, is that first thing we need to actually do is get all the way back to the place of being in the space of the generator function. And in fact, I'm not, I, we had a really good language for this like six years ago, but it's like the generator function of generator functions. Yes, yes. You get yes, way yes. up there. Yes. And say, so, okay, what's the design that allows us to have the proper sort of design space for governance in general, which can then allow us to create the appropriate sort of design project for governance in Twitter. Right? So it's a two-step process. Um, and this does things like, say, principles. Like, what are, what are the core principles? Um, and what are the processes? And I mean, a few things that are obvious. Sorry, I just took an espresso. I'm clearly jacked right now. I apologize. <laughs> it's OK. That's OK. Um, let's see. So one process. One process uh, is this. Uh, Go I ahead. I just wanted to add in, in terms of, uh, in addition to processes and principles, I would I would want to talk about sort of um, implicit constraints and presuppositions as well. Absolutely, exactly, and that's exactly at the right level. Yeah. Exactly, um, and at the level of something like process, one of the processes we'd want to do is say, okay, let's begin the question of what are the implicit constraints and presuppositions. Like, let's actually make those explicit and to the maximum extent possible understand precisely what is the field of play that we're operating in.